Well, I am at the moment uh, roasting a knuckle or a flank of beef um, in the way it was roasted 500 years ago in this kitchen. And this is the only surviving roasting kitchen, roasting fireplace in the world, basically. It's the only Tudor roasting fire that still roasts meat to this day. The main skill is uh, bearing the heat. Um, on a day like today, it's quite hot today, and there's not a lot of air in the kitchen. Um, it can get very hot, and you do tend to cook um, yourself as you, as you sit here. as well yeah and it was it was used by the king central america so no 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 so in this period there are other people there are and this this that i'm painting up here the tudor road if you take them back 500 years they would have never seen sugar i mean now we live in a, an age where you have to be we live in an age where the whole world is addicted to sugar, um, so we can buy it for next to nothing. And we have to be told when it's not in our food. We have to be told when it's uh, low sugar or sugar free. Um, but in those days, it was very spectacular. If you had sugar in your food, then it was wow. It was a big uh, wow factor. The, the key to our live interpretation is doing history where it happened. So explaining cookery in a kitchen, but more than that, explaining 16th century cookery in a 16th century kitchen is a genuinely transformative experience for visitors. The fact that they can see and do and experience the same tasks that Henry VIII's kitchen staff experienced is absolutely mind-blowing to them. Uh, if you were to plot the area of the kitchens on a plan of Hampton Court Palace, including the original building which no longer exists, which had a lot of the uh, storage areas in, the kitchen's area is about a third of the ground floor of the whole palace. Um, it's absolutely fundamental to the good order of the household. 